You're using the, all right. Um, I hope, okay, we'll see if this works. And I think it's recording. <laughs> Zoom recording. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming it's recording. I have no idea. We'll see. Um, okay. Sorry, I, I really hope this, this stuff works. Okay. Um, so I've posted this information about the midterm exam on Friday. So again, you're going to take the exam at home at 3 o'clock, maybe like 2.55 p.m. Um, the, the questions that you're going to answer will appear on CCLE, okay? And so you will, uh, you'll download the questions, and once you download the questions, you can start working to answer them. Before that, though, um, I'm already telling you what the data is going to be, and I, I've given you a starting template, okay? So make sure, I would say today, download the data, download the starting template, and play around with the data, okay? Make sure you understand um, the variables that appear. Um, so the data that we are looking at comes from uh, the U.S. Government Bureau of Labor Statistics, and we are going to look at the average price data, which is used as part of calculating the consumer price index, okay? So, you know, in economics, people are concerned about inflation and, you know, I don't know, just different market factors. And so we're going to just take a look at um, some of the values for uh, a few food items, okay? And you can kind of just go and see um, uh, what you want. So uh, from, from the site, you know, you'll go to um, this place, inflation and prices, and then there's average price data, and you're gonna go all the way over to text files, okay? And you click text files, and, uh, and these things are available. And we're gonna look at data three for food, okay? So this, they have household fuels, gasoline, and food. So we're gonna just click food, and you can just see all sorts of stuff here, okay? And it says AP, you know, the, all of the food items are coded. Let me see if I can, Zoom in, and it doesn't make a difference for text files, okay? Uh, everything's coded, oh, I guess so. Um, everything's coded as, uh, you know, this funny thing, okay? Um, oh, it's so big, it's giving my computer some headaches here. Um, okay, let's, let's try this, okay, we're gonna try this again. Okay, so here's food. And it says something like series ID, and they're tab spaced, so the, the, the value, the columns don't line up. But the series ID is APU 00007011111, okay? AP means we're looking at average price data. The U means unadjusted for seasonal changes, okay? The 0000 stands for the region for which these um, values are calculated, so they do them for uh, all U.S. cities, the West region, the, I don't know, Northeast region, I, don't, I forget what their, the regions are. And then 701111 is the item code, okay? And, and item 701111 I think is uh, a bag of flour, okay? One pound of flour or something like that. And in 1980, month one, January of 1980, a bag of flour would have cost you 20 cents, okay? 20.3 cents, okay, or $0.203. Dollars. And then in February of 1980, it would have cost you 20 and a half cents. In March of 1980, it cost you 21 cents, okay? And, and that's what we have. Um, how do we know all of this stuff, okay? Well, you're going to go to ap.item, average price items, and this gives you the item code. So 701111 is flour, white, all-purpose per pound. Okay, so this is the cost in U.S. dollars 
for this quantity. So they're very specific, right? Later on, 701311, that's white rice, white long grain pre-cooked, okay? Cost per pound. Um, later on, you can, you, you can look up all sorts of stuff, right? And, uh, and so they have the cost of coffee, 100% ground roast, um, the cost of, I don't know, potato chips, a 16 ounce bag of potato chips. And so these are, um, these are the things that we have, okay? And it, I would say definitely you want to read this file that says ap.txt, okay? And this tells you how to read the data, okay? And, um, and specifically, if you look at section four, when it talks about the series ID, such as APU0000 701111, this says the survey abbreviation AP for average price, seasonal, which will be um, U for unseasonal, and S for seasonal, which uh, I think pretty much everything is a U, okay? And then the area code, here it's uh, 0000. And I believe there's only um, four areas, okay? Uh, and then you can read up on the different areas. There's there's a whole bunch of areas. I think the only ones that show up are the zero, the 100 for the northeast, the 200 for the west, 300 for the south, and 400 for the west. Okay. But then you know I guess in other data files they have more specific regions such as A104, which is for Pittsburgh. Okay. And I don't know. Just different things depending on, on where we are. Okay, but anyway, um, so you, I would say familiarize yourself with uh, the data there, okay? And then there is um, the starting template that you will, uh, you'll download and uh, you'll wanna put all of your data files in the same folder. So I think on my computer, well, I've got other stuff in that same folder, but um, so I've created a folder for the midterm. I have the uh, the two data files, apdata.3.food.txt and ap.item.txt, okay? So it, what you'll do is, if you're not sure how to download this, just go ahead and click the thing. It'll open in your browser, and then you're gonna just right click and click Save As. And then, um, and then just make sure you add a .txt um, file ending, okay? File suffix. And uh, I think by default it does that when you right click and you do save as, okay? I mean, you can also just, I think you can just, uh, does it automatically? <laughs> yeah, I think it'll probably do it automatically on the Mac as well. And, and Windows. Um, so anyway. You'll download that, and then, um, okay, so what do I have? Starting template, so we're gonna do that. Don't open, note to self, okay. So, um, and then you'll run Jupyter Notebook. Something is, something is not right. <laughs> okay, there we go. And um, so we'll go in there. Here's the, uh, the midterm exam. Okay, and then so I think if you start with starting template, it should look something like this. All right, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my computer right now. Okay, uh, I think everything actually on yours will be uh, empty, and so I, you know, you you load this up. Okay, and then you load in your data. So you'll just do read dot read underscore table, and then um, I run a few things because uh, when I read in the table. The series ID 
uh, had extra white space, so I just stripped off the extra white space. And then, um, and I went ahead and I extracted the last six digits, which would be the item code, okay? And so when you, when you do that, it reads in series ID, year period, value, and footnote codes, okay? And I went ahead and I uh, extracted the last six digits from the series ID to get the item code, all right? And then, um, and then I read in the item code um, data file, and we can see um, the item codes appear here. And then I use a merge to merge the, uh, the food data with the item code um, data, okay? So that, uh, you know, when we look at this, we, we can see that we're talking about flower and not item 701111, okay? So, uh, so I go ahead and I merge it. Um, I take a look at the, uh, the info. And uh, when we merge it, we have the same information as before, but now we also see that the item is flower, okay? All right, and so at least open it up and make sure it, this starting template works on your machine, okay? And then I recommend just like creating a copy and just playing around with it, okay? Just getting familiar with the data, you know. Um, I don't know, hint, hint, I'm gonna have you extract out the, uh, the region code or the area code, okay, out of the series ID. I mean, that's, um, and just so, so you can start grouping by ser uh, region IDs and things like that, okay? Uh, and, and you can just start kind of playing around, seeing, um, you know, maybe making graphs. Uh, you can average yearly data together or things like that. Um, this is like super current. It was just updated this morning at 831 <laughs> um, where they, because uh, this, uh, this is the government and they constant, they collect this data every month and and so this will contain um, data up through uh, October. So, so you're uh, the last, um, they update about once a month, okay? So about once a month, they'll, they'll update this. And so they just happened to put in October's update this morning. So uh, you can kind of play around with that and, um, and just take a look, okay? I, th I think it's a pretty interesting data set, uh, especially, I don't know, if any of you do any grocery shopping, but you can kind of just uh, see if your intuition about, I don't know, um, food <laughs> and your experience grocery shopping matches what, um, you know, the average, average price uh, thing shows up. I wonder, actually, I haven't explored this particular item. I wonder if avocados show up. No, they don't, okay. Because the other, like, not too long ago, I was like, man, did avocados get really expensive? Yeah, but apparently, unfortunately, they don't track avocados in, um, in this. It's, avocados are kind of a California regional thing. Uh, but, you know, ground beef uh, uh, stuff. Okay. So anyway, um, you know, like, do certain... Well, uh, I don't want to tell you the questions, all right. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, there'll, there'll be a few questions on the uh, midterm exam related to these food things. Just kind of like, what can we learn from the data? All right, um, as far as like, what kind of questions I'm gonna ask, I've posted the, uh, the midterm exam from last quarter, and you can kind of see the, um, the questions that, uh, that I asked there. And uh, I don't know, did anybody try? I know some of you guys tried this out because you guys came to office hours today, but I don't know if other, others of you uh, tried this out. Um, but, uh, um, you know, the last quarter I took uh, the data from another government resource. Um, you know, we're lucky though. These, these data sets are publicly available to us. And, uh, and so we have uh, NHANES, which is the National Health and Nutrition 
uh, examination survey and um, you know, I just asked questions like, do baby boys weigh more than baby girls on average? And so um, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll show you the answers that I worked through to, to answer that. So that was in the spring and the midterm. And here are my sample answers. Okay, and so um, last uh, in the spring, the, the data sets had a, a whole bunch of variable names, which um, unfortunately, you know, complicated things a little bit. But, um, but anyway, that, that's why I'm giving you the data sets now, so you can kind of um, get familiar with the, uh, the variables that appear. All right. So, um, so the first one question. Let me uh, let me just clear this output here. And I think the first few parts were just reading in the data. Okay. So we load all of this up. We read in this stuff, and this is our our merged data. Okay. So the first one: Do baby boys weigh more than baby girls on average? Okay. So here, um, it says calculate and display the mean weight of baby boys for each month from month 0 to 12. And you'll produce 13 values, one for each month, so for 0 to 12. And so this required us to go and look at the age in months, OK? So here I just, I'm going to subset our data set just so we have babies, okay? So we're gonna just take, uh, the entire data set is merged, and I'm just saying, I only want the ones where age and month is less than or equal to 12, okay? And then give me back all of the columns. So I just use um, the dot loc, loc accessor, and, uh, and I get, get this, and I say, okay, how many um, values do we have? We have 399 values, whereas, Oh, it's not, I didn't put this in here, but if I do um, in the full data set, we have around 9,544 rows, okay? And, um, but if we just ask, you know, for age and months, um, you know, there's 662, because uh, they record age and months up through 24 months of age, all right? So we just asked, okay, we only want the babies, so that's gonna be 12 months and younger, is how I'm defining baby right now. Um, well, not even, not, I'm not defining and saying that that's what defines a baby, but I don't know. I think that's like the definition of an infant, right? I don't, I don't know, what's, what's the definition of an infant? One year younger? Okay, well anyway. Um, uh, oh, this is giving me a, a thing, okay, a warning. All right, well anyway, I just said, we're going to, um, I'm creating a new column called age, right? So if I, if I look at um, this, you know, we have all sorts of things. I'm just saying, um, I want the age, and we're going to just um, take the age in months and make, a, make an integer type, okay? Let's see. Try using dot loc low indexer values, try to copy the slice. Okay, well, oh, I guess we're using an accessor with dot loc rather than this. Okay, but anyway, um, so, and then I'm going to uh, subset to just baby boys by saying um, of these babies now, we only want the ones where the gender is specified as one because in the data dictionary, that's what it says. The data dictionary says um, gender one is boys and gender two is girls. Okay. I guess how many X chromosomes? All right. And then so we have 192 boys, and then we say um, gender two will be the girls, and we have uh, 207 girls. Okay. 73 columns because I added a column for age. 
And then, so this first part, calculate and display the mean weight of baby boys for each month, from month zero to 12. I'll produce 13 values, one for each month. I just did um, take baby boys, group by the column age that I just created. I want the column um, BMX weight, so body measurements weight, and I want to use calculate the mean for each of these groups. All right. And so if I do that, here I go. So this is the average weight for zero month babies, five month, uh, one month babies, two month babies. I think these are measured in kilograms, all right? And this is what we have, okay? Or no, I don't know. Is it not? I forget. Maybe it's not. Uh, I don't know what numbers these are. <laughs> I forget. Body measurements. BMX weight. Let's go ahead. Yeah, weight in kilograms. Okay. So we have um, weight in kilograms right there. And there we go. Okay. And then we did it. Uh, same thing for the girls. Calculate and display the mean weight of baby girls for each month. So we group by age. And we calculate the mean. And I print that out. And there we go, okay? So here's the average weights for boys and average weights for girls. This is just one way to do it. You don't have to do it this way, okay? Um, and then, uh, and I decided to make a new data frame called month weights by feeding, uh, you know, putting in a dictionary called boys and I took the series that we just created and girls in the series that we just created here, okay? And, uh, and kind of, sticking them together to get a data frame. And if I print out month weights right now, we would get this as our data frame, okay? So age, we get this. And then we want the, uh, the difference, okay? Which was calculate and display the difference between the mean weight of boys and girls for each month. So we calculated a difference column here. And, um, and I decided to just, I think these show up, I don't know if they're integers or whatever, but uh, I'm just changing the index to be uh, integer index. And, and now we have the data frame with a difference column, okay? And if we just kind of look at this, we see that if we did boys minus girls, our differences are, are always positive, which was surprising to me, because um, I didn't realize that if you just said, which way is more, a baby boy or a baby girl, I was just like, well, they're babies. They, I figured they're the same, you know, I, was, I figured the difference was only like made pronounced when, I don't know, after puberty or something when you're like, oh, men end up being taller or something. But apparently there's a difference in weights for boys and girls. Um, and uh, and if, you, if you plot it, uh, it looks like this. So this is the average weight for girls each month and the average weight for boys each month, which, you know, for the data we've seen, is consistently above. It's not, uh, not that they're different. Okay. And then if we ask, yes, question. Sir, um, can you tell me um, why you chose the variable like, for, like that determines the age? Like, you chose it as like R I D H and then the right? Yes, uh, because in the data dictionary for demographic information. Uh, I don't know where it is. In one of these data dictionaries for demographic information, um, if we ask for uh, age and months, it's um, it's one of these things. Uh, yeah, age age and months at screening zero to twenty four months. Because um, otherwise we have age and years, which is for um, anybody, uh, I guess, yeah, age and, age and years. But then for babies, uh, it's for children from zero to two years, and, and they record the age and months. Did, was there a different variable that you used? There's, um, there's one called R-I-D-E-X-A-G-M. It's also Asian months. It goes up 
like 200 oh i see okay uh all right well let's see there's we have 695 values here uh age and months at exam oh okay um i guess i guess this would have been fine also um actually like at the bottom there's something called panel analytic notes it says that when you're analyzing anthropometric data on children from and youth from birth to 19 years you should use the examination the examination one okay yes all right um okay well uh i used maybe i used the wrong variable <laughs> um i think Overall, your results will be similar, but um, but it's possible I used the wrong variable, okay? Yeah, and there, one, of them was one, one was slightly one different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I will try, uh, I'll go through the questions I'm writing for the exam, and I'll specify specifically, like, the variable or the item codes to avoid ambiguity, okay? so. I won't say flower, I'll say <coughs> item code 701111, okay? And then you'll, you'll, then we'll know we're all talking about the same item, okay? Not just flower, white, I don't know, <laughs> price per pound or something, you know? And then, uh, and then I'll say, you know, um, th there's fewer variables in this, the, the data set that you'll be using. So uh, I'll, I'll try to be careful and I'll try to make my questions unambiguous, um, you know? If there's questions, there's questions. Okay, but anyway, um, we did this, and and I would say, you know, this gives pretty strong evidence. Um, we would probably do a t test to see if the difference is significantly different from zero. But I can quite assure you that the difference column is significantly different from zero, especially because not a single negative difference appears. Um, and then the last one was would Seaborn make a a scatter plot and and here we go, and we see, you know, the linear regression graphs do show like different trajectories for boys and girls as far as uh, the weight goes for babies. Uh, and that was surprising to me. I didn't, I didn't expect to, uh, to see that. Okay. Um, all right. Here's, uh, here's some more stuff. I hesitate to like publish my answers to to the exam, but um, but we'll uh, so here I asked you know what's the correlation and um, and I'm I'm just taking um, we're taking four variables the height the length of the leg and the upper arm length okay upper leg length and upper arm length so. You know, as part of the body measurements, they, they measured all sorts of stuff. And so we're looking at, you know, people's ages, you know, their heights, how long their legs are, how long their arms are, okay? Um, I guess I got rid of the um, missing values and then I filtered down just so we have people who are over age 20, okay? And then when I do this, I have about 5,086 entries. And then as far as correlation goes, you can just create a correlation matrix with the three numeric variables. And we see um, height to leg has a correlation of 78%. Height to arm length has a correlation of close to 80%. And then uh, leg length and arm length has a correlation of about 63%. So these things are, are very strongly correlated um, with leg length and arm length being the, the least correlated of the uh, kind of relationships, okay? Um, 5,086 rows, four columns. And it says, uh, make adult age groups by decade. And so here, um, you know, we want adults age 20 to 29, adults age 30 to 39.9. And, um, and for this, I used uh, this function called cut, pandas.cut. And uh, so I create a, an array that goes 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then, um, and then I say make a um, cut our 
um, this the age column, okay, using bins defined by this this array here, okay, which goes twenty through ninety, and right equals false means um, it's going to go twenty to twenty nine point nine, okay, because I think by default it goes up to um, like thirty, and then it starts at thirty point oh oh one up to forty. So right equals false kind of changes that around, and then. So age group is a series. We're going to take the, um, make a new column called age category. And if I take a look at the head, we, we now have this, OK? So we can see here's the height, the leg, the arm length measurement, and their age is 62. And they go in the 60 to 70 category. And this person who's 53 goes in the 50 to 60 category. So this seems to have, have worked correctly, right? And then, so now, to, uh, to summarize this, I just run a group by, and then I say I want these three columns, and I ask, give me the, the mean, okay? And so here we get um, each of the groups, and then the heights, the legs, and the arm lengths, uh, and their averages, the, the means of everybody in this 20 to 30 group and everybody in this 30 to 40 group, okay? And then, um, and here to kind of make the plot easier, I just relabel the index. Instead of having these index labels that go 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, I just label them to be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, okay? That's that's just what this is. I just relabel the index. And so when I look at the, the index, it looks like this. So this is going to be 20s, 30s, 40s, and so on. OK. And then in the, uh, in the instructions, I said, um, like if I just plot this, and if I did summary plot, no, I'm doing this totally wrong. <laughs> OK. If I did summary plot, what we see is that the height is like so much higher than everybody else. Uh, and so it kind of makes it hard to see, okay? So just in the instructions, I just arbitrarily say subtract off 128 centimeters, okay? And this will kind of put the height numbers in the same, same category. And I just create a new variable called adjusted height. And then we're gonna create a plot based on leg length, arm length, and adjusted height. And I plot that out. And, uh, and this is what we get, OK? And we see that gr the green adjusted height and leg length like line up almost perfectly, all right? And what we see is that as people get older, in their 20s to 30s to 40s to 50s to 60s to 70s, their height shrinks. And almost like exactly together, I don't know if we can say this is what's driving their shrinking height, is that their legs are actually getting shorter. All right, I don't know how this works, okay? I'm not a doctor, but it's just fascinating that the average leg length shrinks every decade, and the height goes down like almost in exact alignment with, with those things, except between 70 and 80, height even drops off more precipitously, right? So like between 20 to 70, you're like people's legs are shrinking on average and their, their average heights keep going down. And then between 70 and 80, their legs shrink. You know, this looks pretty linear, but then their, their height just shrinks down even more. So I, I guess your, your spine also shrinks or whatever, okay? Interestingly enough, your arm length overall doesn't change, okay? So, so as, you, like, as you get older, you, you become more, I don't know, <laughs> ape-like, I guess, not, like not, not, that's the, the wrong thing to say, but just like your arms relative to the rest of your body, your arms stay the same length, and so like, I don't know, your arms will be not dragging on the floor, but, but it's just kind of interesting, right? Because uh, I guess if you think about like, what gravity affects on your body, like your legs and your uh, back are under the constant strain of gravity as you're walking around. And I don't know, maybe that takes a toll. I have no idea. But your arm length just dangles and they don't, they don't show like, 
tall people just dying out. It could also be, yeah, tall people just dying out. I don't, I, I would be surprised if that's what's going on back here. I don't, it's, it's hard to say. And, and, you know, we're all about correlation is not causation. But it's interesting that the height and the leg length like line up so almost so perfectly up, up through here, up to 70. Whereas um, the arm length remains like almost flat throughout, throughout the years. I just I just thought that was so neat to see. Um, okay, um, I learned my mistake from last year's or last quarter's midterm or the spring quarter's midterm. Question three was open ended, and it was I don't know probably like I thought it was a fun question, but it ended up being like very difficult to grade because people did different stuff. And like, I don't know how to properly evaluate one person's <laughs> different approach versus another person's different approach that was maybe creative, but wrong. I don't know. You know, it, it was, it was, so anyway, um, it just says, is education level related to household income? Okay. That was, that was the question. And so we're looking at, um, I don't know. What did I look at? Um, so we said 20, uh, everybody who's 20 years older, and then we just want uh, their age and their um, basically head of household education level, which I think is, oh, head of household income, and then a uh, higher education level, which were these two, two things here, okay? And then um, when we did that, we had all of this information. Um, we had, I had to remove people who, um, in the code book, these correspond to people who uh, refuse to answer their household income levels or education levels. So, you know, just to, uh, we got rid of them, okay? If they didn't, if they refused to answer. So they weren't coded as NA, they were coded as some kind of number. So, um, so just so that those numbers don't throw it off, we, we removed them, okay? And so that required going through the code book and looking, looking this stuff up, okay. Is, are you, you're not going to tell us whether it's an A or are you just there for the code book? Uh, That's part. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I have to run a balance between like telling you exactly what to do versus letting you figure it out, but also being too ambiguous that I get, it's hard. <laughs> so, so I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm I'm still refining the questions and I keep reading them over and I'm like, you know, after you write them and you give the exam, you're like, oh, I didn't, you know, this thing that was so clear to you is clearly not clear to the students. So it, it's, we learned so. Okay, and then also, weirdly enough, as far as household income, they had like different coding systems. And so, um, most of the question was like, are you in this like 20 to 30, 40,000 range or are you in this range of thing? But then they all, I guess some people had a different coding system, which was, do you make less than 20,000 or do you make um, over 20,000, which uh, is not as informative, okay? So it's, it's, well, I guess it's informative only for identifying, uh, you know, very low incomes. And, and so anyway, um, I created a pivot table to kind of uh, summarize all of this. And this was the relationship between um, household income versus uh, kind of a coded income level. And then um, in here, then I just uh, created a side-by-side a -side bar chart here. I don't know, there's all sorts of stuff that we could have created. Um, So um, I should, uh, should expose this. Mm. Uh, you can't do that with the data frame. Okay. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to do here. Um, is it capital T? Yeah, you're probably right. Um, Okay, and so this is kind of, um, this is not very clear, but uh, you know, we're looking at, um, this is for different education levels. And so five is like, you've got your college degree and four is you have a high school degree and things like that. And the orange being kind of your highest income level earners, I think, um, uh, this is, this is really no good. I should have done a better job here. <laughs> but, um, the highest income the yeah, yeah, the highest yeah. This this was this was the highest one, right? And then and same same thing. Um, you know, as uh, if we're looking at the who has income levels, we see in the highest income levels we have the highest the most college degrees. Yeah. So, but but anyway. Um, Take a look uh, either at the, the one from last quarter and then also familiarize yourself with the data for this year. And uh, um, I will not see you on Friday. Stay at home and, uh, and be ready for the, uh, the instructions to drop.